Hey, glad you stopped by again here back at it playing with the uh, 1968 Firebird, the Great Pumpkin Project, was the kind of name this one. Took the trunk floor out last go around and kind of got things roughed out of there, but I've been working on here in the meantime, cleaning up all the edges, getting all the junk out of the way, but while sitting in here, kind of brought back some memories in the old brain of mine from when I was a youngster, probably three or four years old, driving who knows where in a 1975 Impala. It was about time to get a little something to eat, so we pulled over to the side of the road, maybe at a rest stop, but I have no idea. But all I remember is them popping the trunk, sit me on the spare tire, which would be somewhere right about you know, here height-wise, and somehow I fit on top of the spare tire, eating my sandwich and looking up at the rear package tray of the car. So that's what kind of prompted the memory. But of course we had uh, deviled ham sandwiches. I'm not really quite sure if that's really ham or not, but we ate it up anyway. But why did I bring that up? I have no clue whatsoever. Just reminiscing, you could say, and I wanted to share the story with you. But uh, besides all that, what we're going to be getting into today is these inner fender wells. You can see, I'll get you a little closer here. They got some problems. Uh, pulled the floor pan out of it. I knew I had some issues. And I don't want to replace this entire panel because that's a whole lot more welding to get that replaced or cut out because, well, I don't think I need to. It's just this lower lip, about an inch, inch and a quarter that needs repaired, and it's not that complicated. Make some patch panels. I'll show you how to do a real nice one. Keep everything orientated right. And then, of course, make it where it's nice butt wells. By the time it's all done and buffed and cleaned up, you'll never know it was repaired except for, well, you watched it on here and you saw the car being built. But besides all that, let me get here close, show what we have to work with, and come up with a plan. Here's the thing we're going to try to fix up. This is what should be the inner fender well. The trunk floor will actually weld to this seam right through here. But as you can tell, well, we've got a little rust damage. Now, this is the worst side. The passenger side is not nearly as bad off. And even got some rust holes here. By the time I get up here, though, it's in really nice shape, except for where I snagged it taking it out. So those are really good. So I'm going to do a little patch panel from probably about here to here. And I'm going to go about here to about where that little notch is at. And I probably end up replacing it. It's pretty rusty. Just make a piece all the way around to here. Now, I just knocked that off. <laughs> how do you know where this is all going to go? How are we going to make it fit? How are we going to make it look right? And that's what I'm going to show you here by, well, using a little cardboard template, some masking tape, and some magnets. wire brush action all done up. We're going to do a little sandblast, a little spot blast around that whole seam. Now I can get all the rust out in the areas that I'm going to leave in place. So I don't have to worry about it festering back through. And that made it clear this is probably my least favorite part of the whole project, sandblasting. What that looks like here, in case you haven't ever seen this before, I didn't sandblast this area because I'm going to be replacing that. Same as this. But the areas I don't plan to replace, well, right through all through here. I'll do a little spot for that piece, but here's where the metal is good and clean. Now, I didn't sandblast the whole car because one of my plans are is once I get this all welded together, that's not going to be an exposed theme. Seam. Then I'm going to take this whole car, put on a rotisserie, set it off to the media blast. I haven't blasted everything that I couldn't get to. Or I don't want to mess it because I really, really don't like sandblasting. But you should call us a necessary evil to keep that rust from doing this again, festering between the panels. But uh, next thing here, I'll get my patch panel all shown up here with some cardboard. Show you how we do that next. All right, next we're going to do a little piece of cardboard. This is leftover cereal box that I get donated to me from a, I think you should call it, a very devoted viewer, my dad. Uh, sends me lots of these because I'll tell you it's nice repurposing for cardboard boxes and getting better use out of them. But what I'm wanting to do here, this isn't going to be a template that I'm going to cut out and make the piece of metal from. This is going to be a template of where the heck it needs to be when it's done. Uh, and what's that mean? Well, I don't want to make sure I don't change the dimension or the height of it. So I'm going to get this all put into place. I have some of these uh, magnets that uh, I so very much love, and uh, you've not heard me tell you the story, but. These magnets are great. I mean, they are super strong. They have an extreme amount of pull, but you get two that are opposite and they'll slam together so tight that you can't even pull them apart. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't want to, but the problem is I played with these at work one time and I'm not allowed to play with them at work because I got them in my hand and two of them snapped together and got some meat stuck in between them. And of course, the only way to get it off was rip the meat apart and of course cause some problem there. 
Well, the silly thing was, is I didn't do it once. I, I did it twice, so I got injured at work on magnets. So I'm not allowed to play with these at work anymore. So what we're gonna do though, since I'm at home, I'm allowed to, we're gonna use these magnets to kind of hold the cardboard in place. But I'm gonna draw a line where I would like this fender well to be when it's all said and done. Because if I start trimming this back, I'm not gonna have any points of reference anymore, but I want this as a point of reference so I know when I'm done putting my new piece of metal in, where I need to be. I'll do a little point of reference just in case this thing moves around on me. Okay. Now what I think I'm gonna do next, I think I was gonna cut this out the crappy part of the metal that I'm planning to replace. We'll do that right about through here. I'll get where I sandblast it when I actually turn back into good metal. So about here. I'll come all the way over to here. I'm gonna cut that out. And now I got the cruddy metal all cut out of the way. I'm gonna have to make a little patch panel. It's only about an inch and an eighth inch, uh, yeah, a little over an inch. A little strip come through here, and then we'll trim it about that height, and then I'll start welding that thing into place. So, so now I have some kind of point of reference. And I'll do the same thing for all these other spots too. So, uh, and of course I like keeping pieces of uh, scrap metal around. This is from the leftover from the uh, the tow board excursion there in the front. So still got a good metal on it. So I'm gonna recycle, repurpose some of this. Cut me a little strip off there and get it put into that. Now we just cut this out, slap it on a piece of metal, and cut that out of the piece of metal, and we're good to go. All right, got it all cut out. It's a nice, cool, like, sticker template. You know, it's actually really close to the right shape. Now I'm going to do is take the cutoff wheel, 
cut this out of my uh, piece of scrap here and get it fitted into place. All I'll cut out, I'll clean up the edges, are kind of rough from cutting it, but uh, get that thing all cleaned up and it'll start getting that hammered and test fitted into place. We'll get you a little bit closer. Pull the cardboard template or guide out of the way. I made some reference marks so I can put it back in the same spot. Um, of course, we clean the top side or the front side here, but the other thing you need to do is also here on the inside where the fender well goes, you need to do the same thing. Clean back all the paint and undercoating. It'll weld a whole lot better and reduce the chance of fire. So that's one of the little pieces of prep that I wanted to make sure that you saw. But now what I'll do is I'll put the cardboard back into place. I'll start working that piece of metal probably start tack on this side here and working with the hammer until I get the radius back into it and keep tack welding it until I get the final fitment right. get that tack welder right there. I really like how that's looking. Get you up close first here's our final results you can see a little bit of spots a little tiny pitting here and there but that's a whole lot better than a rusty panel and not to mention this is just the inner fender well i now have something structural to tie to when i put my floor pan in i can weld to this which is tied to this and tied to this this gives the car a whole lot more structure because this is completely rusted out so now this car is going to be a whole lot better i don't have to replace the inner fender well I do have to continue the same process, make my little template guide, kind of keep going down the way. So I'm gonna do this piece here and up there, but I said, I won't drag you along with that. You've already seen that, but I'll get you a little shot here when it's all said and done, but it's gonna take me a little time to get this doctored up. All right, your finished product, all patched up, ready to go. No more rust holes, got nice solid metal to tight. The trunk floor pan into it, I even went as far as when I put this piece in there, check this out, little notch right there. I'm not really sure why, but I decided to put that back in there too for a little added detail, but. All done, check this out. And unfortunately, we have to do it all over again. But this side's not nearly as bad. It's little small pieces for here. That little radius is supposed to be there. And that part there. So this one's gonna go pretty quick that I hope. Well, so there you have it. How to patch up an inner fender well so you can prep it to put your floor pan in. 
that side's all done the other side yet to go but uh, again i'm not going to drag you along with that you get the idea i wanted to show you how it was done and the detail we're going to put into this car to make it ultra super nice now, the next thing i'll do is probably put some well through primer on that seam alone because it's all i think above it so i can get sandblast off there's no reason to get carried away with painting something that's going to get stripped off but i do want to get something between the two panels before i put it together to prevent it from rusting like it did now this car is probably never going to see rain snow slop like indiana weather ever again in its life but if it does it should definitely hold up as good or better than the factory so anyway i'm thinking about getting me a deviled ham sandwich and taking me a bit of a break because i'll tell you it's just not quite the contortion as it used to be being all wadded up here in the trunk you know, i'm feeling a little claustrophobic so i'm gonna call it quits for today i'm gonna get the camera back out here grab you guys along for the next part of the project but i think the next thing we're gonna go around is Get the uh, trunk floor test fit and see how good or how bad it really is. So until then, you guys stay safe out there and we'll catch you guys next time.